Hey guys, it's Jennifer. It's the end of week one. I have 11 weeks left in phase one. This week consisted of a lot of unhealthy eating. Jeremy and I went into San Francisco on our day off and we started off the week with burgers and burritos and cookies and all the unhealthy things a personal trainer like me should not be eating. Oh, and Jeremy surprised me with an oversized sourdough teddy bear. To be honest, I feel awful. Um, it may seem great that I get to eat whatever I want, but is it worth it? No. I'm extremely tired. I'm waking up every morning with headaches. I'm bloated constipated. Um, I just feel awful. I'm hoping within the next few weeks my body will adjust a little bit to my new diet, but as of right now, I don't feel so great. But on a more positive note, tonight we have a newspaper photographer coming into the San Francisco Bay Area where Jeremy and I live. They're doing an article on my weight endurance experience, an experience that's going to help you build muscle, lose fat, change your body and change your lifestyle. As we get started, I want to tell you more about what I'm doing so you get a full understanding of what's to come each and every week for the next 24 weeks. So phase one, I'm gaining 40 pounds in 12 weeks by switching to an unhealthy diet and an increase in calories. I will not be participating in cardio. I will be participating in weight training. Why am I participating in weight training? Check out my last video where I give you a full explanation. So phase one, 40 pounds, 12 weeks. Following phase one comes phase two, where I will lose 40 pounds in 12 weeks. I will be eating healthy, I will be participating in cardiovascular exercise, and yes, I will be lifting weights. You're probably wondering what the point of this is, and the point is, for me to better relate to my clients. And you right now are virtually one of my clients. I wanna help you, I wanna give you the advice and the tools that you need to make a difference in your life. These are things that you would normally have to pay a personal trainer or a fitness professional to help you with. The original approach that I took to fitness was long, stressful, and confusing due to all the fad diet, quick fix scams, lose 30 pounds in 10 days, all that stuff that's on the market that's confusing people. People don't know what's healthy, what's right, and what actually works. I don't wanna see you fight through all of the stress and confusion that I did whenever I first started. I have the ability and the knowledge to help you get to where you wanna go, so why shouldn't I help you? This is your opportunity to make a change. Don't wait any longer, do it now. Do it for you, do it for your family, do it for your health. Take up on this opportunity to make a difference in your life. If you've seen my initial video, then you already know that I was a survivor of a speedboat accident that killed my family. It killed my mom, my brother, my sister, and my sister's fiance. Here is one of my favorite old family photos. I am the little goofy one on the left. I spent years suffering and grieving, feeling lost in life, feeling like I had no purpose, and when I found fitness, all of that changed. I was happier, I had a better outlook on life, my energy levels increased, and in turn, it made those around me in life happier, and I want the same to happen for you. I turned my love for fitness into a career, moved to California, and I am loving life. I'll be posting a new video every week, each video will have a different health and fitness related topic, and at the end of every video, I will weigh in. My videos can be found at weightendurance.com or if you go to YouTube at youtube.com slash weightendurance. At the end of my whole weight endurance experience, I will be publishing a book that will show you how I psychologically carried myself through this entire process to get my exact results. So, moving on to this week's topic. Five effective ways to track your progress. Five effective ways to track your progress. Three out of these five ways you can actually do yourself at home. And just so you know, you don't have to do all five of these things. I'm just showing you different options that you have and things that I will be doing throughout my journey. I'll never show you anything that I don't personally do or use myself. 
So the first option that you have is taking transformation photos. It's a great thing to have to see where you started and to see how far you've come in the end. I'm going to take photos throughout this journey every two weeks to assess my progress. So you can go ahead and take a photo of yourself just standing front, picture, turn, take a picture from the back. You can do it flexing or just standing with your arms to your sides. That's completely up to you. I recommend if you're trying to build muscle to take a picture of yourself flexing so you can see the progress of your muscle growth. The second option is strength assessments. This you can do in your gym. Choose an exercise and see how many repetitions you can perform of that exercise at a specific weight. Here's an example of some of the exercises that I use to assess myself. For upper body, I'll do a dumbbell shoulder press, record the reps and the amount of weight used. Push-ups, how many push-ups I can do total. For core, I'll do a plank and see how many seconds I can hold myself up. For lower body, I'll do barbell squats and deadlifts. Now, if you don't know what some of these exercises are, go to bodybuilding.com, click on the workouts tab, then the exercises tab, then exercise guides, and they have an amazing database that will show you through video how to perform each and every exercise properly. I like to do a four repetition max, meaning I'll choose an exercise, choose a weight, I'll perform four reps of that exercise at that weight, and if I can get to a fifth rep, then I know the weight is too light and I can go a little heavier. Give this a try. See how much weight you can lift safely and properly at four reps. Weight train on a consistent basis and assess yourself every six weeks to see how much stronger you've gotten. The third option that I'll tell you about is circumference measurements, which is the typical method that personal trainers use. This you can do yourself at home and I'll show you right now how you can do it and where to measure yourself. During weight endurance, I will measure myself every other week. So the measurements that I use are the chest, then you'll measure your waist, next will be your navel, then you can measure your hips. And last but not least, the thighs. The next method you can use is body fat testing. A lot of personal trainers will use a skin fold caliper. There's a lot of other ways too. The method that I'm using during weight endurance is going to be hydrostatic weighing. It's where they weigh you underwater. Lean body mass is more dense than water, therefore it sinks and they're able to tell how much body fat percentage you have. Again, you don't have to use all of these options, but if you do want to get hydrostatically weighed, do a Google search, see if there's anywhere in your area that does it. Where I'm going, it cost $50 per weigh-in, and I bought a three-pack bundle, so it actually only cost me $100. Again, completely up to you if you are interested in doing something like that. The final option for tracking your progress if you're more interested in your internal health rather than your body composition would be to get a cholesterol test. Make sure if you get your cholesterol tested you're getting a full screening. When you get a cholesterol test done they'll give you your results and it'll tell you your total cholesterol, your LDL which is your bad cholesterol, your HDL which is your good cholesterol, and your triglycerides. I'm going to be getting this done at the end of phase one and at the end of phase two so we can see how much it varies due to my diet. So before we move on to week one weigh-in, I wanna give you a little bit of advice about the scale. If you're using a scale to assess your weight rather than the five methods that I just showed you, be careful because water weight fluctuates a lot per day. I see a lot of people who will jump on the scale every single day and when their water weight is fluctuating, they're getting disappointed in putting themselves off track because they look at the scale and they say, oh my God, I gained two pounds since yesterday. And that's not physically possible to gain two pounds of fat in one day. So just be careful. Don't use the scale every day. If you do use the scale, I say once a week, even better, once every two weeks or once per month. Take advantage of the other options that I've given you. And 
let's go see how much I weigh. My initial weigh-in was done last week after adding simple carbohydrates and sodium into my diet to prepare me for the weeks to come. I weighed in at 114 pounds and now we're going to compare that to where I'm at this week. Can you see the scale? Hold on. 21.5. <laughs> I'm shocked. 121.5. I'm going to end this video with one question that I have for you. That's what frustrates you the most about diet and exercise. Talk to me. Help me help you. Post a comment below. Subscribe and I'll see you next week.